Hello everybody, what's up? How are you guys doing today? Drop me a comment and let me know where you're tuning in from. So I'm tuning in from, as usual, the lovely Sedona, Arizona. Make sure you stay hydrated. I'm in the desert. Need my water. We all need our water. We are water. All right, so <clears throat> while y'all are tuning in, I'm going to begin to shuffle. Just go ahead and let me know in the comments where you're tuning in from. Today is the full moon. And for those of you who are new to these videos, they don't really have anything to do with the moon. We use the moon as a measurement of time so that we can meet four quarters every month. Whatever's going on with the moon is really reflecting what's going on inside of us. And you can look around your environment and you can find anything in nature. It'll tell you what's going on inside of you because we are one with our surroundings because we're one with all things. And so the moon just happens to be a really obvious example of what's going on behind everything. So again, you know, you can use other signs in nature to keep you on track, but the moon happens to be a really easy one that connects all of us all over the world. So that's why we use it, so that we can create a global network that is consistently meeting every week. And so you'll see all the comments that people are leaving of where they're from shows us that we are indeed creating a web, a web of light around the world every week when we do these activations. So feel free to join us anytime. I call them activation portals because every week when we do this and we gather, we unite, we do really create an energetic portal and this information comes in and we all receive it together. It's super powerful. So the full moon activation is all about this idea that we have now come to the fullness of the picture. There have been more pieces to the puzzle that have been revealed now. At this time, we're receiving much information that's providing clarity, that's allowing us to see really what's been going on with our current situation. And then over the next week, we will be integrating that information. So right now, what is being revealed to us? What are those pieces of the puzzle that are being revealed to us? I'm personally very excited for this because I've got a lot going on in my life, as I'm sure you all do. And I'm really excited to uncover the cards that symbolize the energies that are present in the operations of what's going on behind the scenes of our realities. So we're going to pull these cards and they're going to show us what is at the root of our situation so that we can kind of bypass all of the material entanglement of our situations and understand that, hey, we're all in this together. So go ahead and let go of whatever it is you've been carrying today. Maybe you've been carrying this, this heaviness for days. Maybe all week, maybe for weeks, maybe for months, whatever it is, just set it aside just for this reading. Just take at least a moment to feel open, receptive, empty, so that you can be filled with the information that's on its way. And remember that energy cannot be created or destroyed, it can only be transformed. So we don't need to create a space because infinite space already exists. Where? In the center of the center of the center of your, our one heart. And that's where I'm meeting you here and now. You can picture yourself connecting to the deck by envisioning a thread of light from your inner eye or your heart going to the deck. You can picture yourself shrinking and jumping into the deck. I mean, get creative. It, it, everything is mind. It's all about imagination. So how creative can you get? Okay, so, or you can picture yourself sitting here with me right now. You can picture yourself connecting with all of the amazing beings around the world who are tuning into this video live and who will continue to tune in with, with the recording. You can picture that network of people being present with you right now and all holding hands, maybe all across the world, surrounding the entire circumference of the world. Whatever you want to do, just be here now. All right. All 
Okay, I'm getting a strong pull to ask the very first question. What is the foundation of what we've been going through, not just this month, but what this month is allowing us to come to a pinnacle to, pinnacle to? So this is something I'm, I'm seeing, I'm feeling that we've been going through this, this theme for a long time, but only now is it becoming very obvious. So what is the foundation of what we've been experiencing? Why are we experiencing this? What is it all about? What's the current challenge and gift which becomes a bridge to the future. Who's our ally to make it through? And let's pull one more, we'll do four today. What is the card that represents the future that we're heading toward? Okay, so it's not long-term, but the short-term future ahead. <coughs> Okay, we will begin with the first card. Foundation. Okay, five of swords. Swords is the suit of challenges. And look at the image. This is saying that we're not feeling satisfied. We're not feeling complete. We're feeling disappointed with where we're at. We're feeling like, okay, I may have wanted to be here, but now that I'm here, it doesn't feel right. I'm seeing that things are not complete and I need to make it right. Okay, so this card being the answer to the, that very specific question we asked of what is the foundation of what we're going through? This card being in that position is showing us that we have work to do to pick up the pieces of all that's happened in our, in our lives, to clean up the mess that we've made. There is still amends to make. There are still perhaps people that we need to clear things up with. There's unfinished business, things that need to be said. And the tarot is a sequence, it's a sequential story. So looking ahead, that's what you wanna do. You wanna look ahead to see how can I see the next card and envision that for myself so that I can assist the energy to progress, to move forward in my life. And what comes after the Five of Swords is sort of a, a transition, a rite of passage, moving out of the struggles and uh, onto clearer waters, calmer waters. So if we wanna get there, if we wanna get to the other side what needs to be done right now? That's what this card is asking us to look at. And the answers will be clear if only you just pause, take a moment and really meditate on it. What do I need to do to be on that other side? What habits and behaviors was I not ready to let go of, but I now see will be the death of me? What Behaviors have I been keeping up thinking, oh, they're harmless, even though in the back of my mind I knew it's not for the highest good, but I kept it up because harmless, I thought it was harmless. But now it's brought me to this place where I see that even though I thought these behaviors were harmless, they're certainly not serving me. They're certainly not serving me. They're not bringing me to where I want to be. So how can I Look at where I'm disappointed in my life. See where things are not working out in my life. Look at that and then let it go. Begin to do those things I need to do to progress. Not get stuck in the disappointment. Not get stuck in this mentality of, oh man, things really didn't work out. This is not where I want to be. This is not where I want to be. This is not where I want to be. I don't want to get stuck there thinking the same thing over and over again. Okay, this is not where I want to be. So where do I want to be? And in consideration of where I do want to be, how can I begin to fabricate a plan that will get me there? How can I shift my thoughts, my feelings, which are 
supercharging those thoughts? How can I redirect my thoughts and feelings toward the manifestation of a life that I really want to have, that I want to experience? We need to gather our energies mentally, emotionally, physically, gather them and redirect them into the proper channels that are going to help us to progress. This is what it's about. You may have regrets. You may feel incomplete. Ask yourself why, why do I feel incomplete? And how can I move to more of a feeling of completeness? Why do I feel regrets? What have I done that I regret? What have I said that I regret? That feels key right now. As I said that, it was like lighting up. Ask yourself where you have regrets right now and then ask why and then tell yourself, have that inner self-dialogue. Tell yourself that I can't get stuck on this regret that as always, I must learn from what is coming up in my experience internally and externally. So what is the regret trying to show me? What is this regret trying to tell me about myself? Because, hey, remember the situation and the details of the situation around the regret are temporary because this world is temporary because the material world is temporary. And what you will take with you beyond the grave, beyond this material world is all the light that you cultivate because the light is eternal, eternally sustainable. So how can you remember that in this moment? And that's the first thing you always want to do when a swords card comes up. Here's a little tip for you tarot readers. When swords come up, you want to understand that it's about a challenge and challenges are temporary. They eventually fade away because all that is not a reflection of that eternal light where we eventually return to, it's temporary. So right away, whenever you see a swords card, you want to think temporary. And that puts you in a state of detachment, this, this foundational state, which is necessary to be able to be receptive to a solution to progress, we have to first understand and acknowledge temporary. This is temporary. And right away, it helps you rise above the situation and understand that what we're really examining here is how can I cultivate the most light? Because the challenge, the struggle, the pain, the suffering is temporary. So how can I squeeze the most out of this experience? How can I make the most of this experience? So remember that first. Ask what you have regrets about right now. And then show yourself how you can learn from that, how you can learn from the regret. See how the regret is telling you information, important key information about yourself that you will need to apply in order to progress psychologically and spiritually. Okay, so that's what this is for. Picking up the pieces of our lives and putting them back together in a way that can help us to progress to the next stage of our evolution. What is the biggest challenge right now in this? Oh, we have a six. So we had a five. Now we have a six. Six of cups. And sometimes the challenge looks more like a gift for other people because the challenge is one with the gift. So some of us may be on more of the challenge side of this and some of us may be more on the gift side of this. Okay. And I'm going to explain what it is. Cups is the suit of emotions, feelings, the heart. And it's six of cups. You can see he's the little boy and little girl are exchanging this cup, which has a flower in it. It's acting as a vase for this flower, little planter for this flower. And this is about giving and receiving, transmitting from the heart, giving and receiving from a place of purity innocence, authenticity, vulnerability, transparency. All these things are what helps us stay in that space of the heart, stay centered in our heart and move from there and exchange from there and relate from there. And this message feels really clear. This being the challenge is showing us that the hardest part of doing this work right now. The hardest part of moving away from regret and disappointment and just doing what we have to do to progress. The hardest part of that is going on with our relationships, the people around us. 
it's hard for us to stay in our authentic truth because perhaps we have all of these preconceived ideas and definitions of ourselves and of each other. And then we want to project that and we want to allow all those preconceived ideas to act as walls that get in the way of this kind of relating. We may feel anger toward people, you know, certain relationships that we're in. We may feel anger toward these people. <clears throat> we may feel guilt or shame around these relationships, maybe because of our own behaviors or the way that we've spoken to these people. Either way, we're harboring these negative feelings and it's getting in the way of us being able to relate from this pure heart space. So the best thing you can do right now as you move away from the disappointment and begin to pick yourself back up and move ahead is remember to stay in your heart. It's so important because if you don't, if you don't stay in that heart space, whatever you think, say, or do from any other space that isn't the heart will pile on the bullshit, will pile on the pain, will pile on the suffering, will make your process harder, whatever your process is. And this is our process right now. And we need a little sweetness. We need to stay in our hearts, obviously, when we're going through such a challenge as this. How will we ever make it through without the heart? The heart is the one that guides the way, always. And especially when we're feeling disappointment, when we're feeling frustrated, when we're holding on to guilt or shame, which are the lowest frequencies, the heart is the way. So long as we continue to act from a place that is outside of the heart space, it will only pile on the challenges. So remember that no matter who you're dealing with in your life, as far as relationships, I'm saying close relationships, romantic relationships, family, friends, strangers, stay in your heart. Do your absolute best to make this a game, to stay present, to speak to people, to relate to people from the heart. A couple of easy ways to do this. One, you can choose to see people through what I call the innocence lens or the child lens. You can see this person's inner child as you communicate with them. And this might be easier to do with certain people and harder to do with other people because of the emotional cords and attachments that we either have or don't have with these different relationships. But the harder it is, the more work there is to be done there. The harder it is to really see someone in their innocence, the more magic will come of it when you really can break through to that. Okay, so for example, if you're looking at someone and they've really hurt you, let's say they've emotionally hurt you, they broke your heart. If you can see their inner child, and we all have that inside of us, then you are breaking through to the center of who this person is beyond your pain and suffering and your ideas of this person. And that's not to say that then you have to for forgive all that this person has done and welcome them back into your life. But seeing the inner child in this person will certainly do more good for the one and all than if you were to project a hideous image of character onto this person. It's just simply put, when you see the child in each other, when you see the innocence in each other, then you're really starting off on the right foot. Then you're really creating a foundation to be able to move ahead and progress in the ways that you know you need to. This is for you. It's not for that person. It's for you. It's for the one that lives inside of you. It's for your own well-being. It's for your own good. So just try to relax, let go of some of the harsh judgments you have around the people in your, in your life right now. It's not about them. It's about you. It's about your progression. And all holding on to all that stuff, holding on to all the anger and disappointment and, and guilt and shame and all these things is certainly not going to help you pr progress. Okay, so the biggest challenge, relating from the heart. Keep returning to that space as you move through this challenge. <clears throat> okay, the third card, moving on to the ally. Who is going to help us in this process? <laughs> boom, boom. <sighs> Perfect confirmation for everything we just reviewed. We have a five and a six, and now we have an ace. 
And the ace follows in the same suit as the six, the cups. There literally could not be a better ally right now. As we're moving through this challenge, of trying our best, and damn, it's hard sometimes, to stay in the heart as we give and receive our energy, as we move on our life's path. Who is the ally? Boom, the ace of cups. Aces contain the raw power, all of the power of the element pulled. And we're talking cups. So right now, we're receiving all the raw power of the element of water, of the heart, feelings, emotions. And aces are initiations too. They're new beginnings. New beginnings in regard to our path, meaning we are initiating a new beginning on the path of deepening our heart wisdom. Because we're talking about the element of the heart, feelings, emotions, water. So we're initiating a new journey on the path of deepening our wisdom of the heart, wisdom of water. I call it water wisdom. You'll hear about that in my new book, by the way, guys. It's halfway done. It's going to be the royal path to... So I talk about this in the book because it's on the minor arcanum. So we're, we're going on this journey now to reach deeper levels of water wisdom, heart wisdom. So remember, that's what it's really about. It's not even about the different faces and names and places. Those are all temporary. What's the energy behind it? Remember, we're right now learning how to deepen our connection to our own heart, to the one heart, water wisdom emotions, feeling. So what does that mean, right? It's like, what do you mean I'm deepening my connection to the heart and water wisdom? What is all this new agey stuff you're asking, right? It's really real stuff. It's not new age. It's timeless, timeless truth. It's a process that we all have been going through since the beginning of time is deepening our wisdom of the elements as they exist inside of us and all around us. And so right now we're connecting specifically to water. And what that means is we're learning lessons around relationships, how to relate better, how to relate better to our own heart, to our own emotions, to our own feelings. We're dealing with emotional mastery. So here we're approaching a new beginning to do that. You can see this cup as the cup of your heart, the grail of your heart, and it's overflowing. It's the card of unconditional love. And this was the card we pulled to guide us through this challenge. So if you can stay present and remember that this ace is inside of you, this power, this overflowing cup is inside of you, then you will never feel disconnected from that source of energy that can move through you to do the work that needs to be done. You don't even need to do anything. If you connect to this archetype that exists within yourself, it connects you directly to the one heart of which we're all a part. And it gives you an infinite flow of healing waters that you need to move through all emotional situations in your life. So remember this image, print it out, put it on your altar. If you have the card, carry it with you in your wallet, put it in your car, put it on your mirror where you're going to see it. Or create your own symbol and image of that overflowing cup of the heart, that grail of the heart. And watch how that magic stays with you and watch how it subconsciously weaves its way into your mind, into your experience, and then blossoms and manifests as something truly beautiful. So when it's hard for you to relate from this place of purity, when it's hard for you to remain in your authenticity and stay in your heart, remember this. It's not hard. You're just making it so. All right, and one more card, a card to represent the near future. So we have two swords cards and two cup cards in this reading. Challenge and emotions. The eight of swords is all about being stuck. That place where you feel stuck and decisions need to be made in order to set yourself free. We're going to reach a point. And tell me if this resonates with you. We're going to reach a point where we feel stuck, where we feel, oh my God, I'm here again. I'm here again. What do I do? What we're going to do in this moment is remember the foundation of it all. 
We're here to move ahead. We can't keep making the same mistakes. We don't want to keep trapping ourselves in a prison of our own guilt and fear. Look, those bandages, those, those, that wrap is loose. She can cut that easily. There's all these swords around her, so many tools to set herself free. So when we get to this point, we need to remember that's not where we want to be. It's time to set ourselves free. Do what we must to move ahead. Stop living in the disappointment, the shame, the guilt, the fear, because when you do that, it eventually traps you in a prison of your own negative feelings and thoughts. So when you reach this point, remember, there is no one keeping you trapped but yourself. And it's time to cut those cords once and for all. You've been here before. I've been here before. We've been here many times before. Many, many times. That's why it's a card within the deck of tarot. That's why it's a part of the story. You look at this and go, oh shit. But we're going to be here again and again. So don't fear this place. Don't fear this place. It's a card for a reason. The scariest, most intimidating cards are the ones that you really need to look at and redefine your relationship to those cards. And more importantly, your relationship to those lessons that you will revisit again and again in your life. So don't be afraid of this. Understand that we're going to come to this point again and again in our lives where we feel stuck in our challenges. We feel trapped. We don't know what to do. But in the end, we must remember that challenge is temporary. Those walls are temporary. That lock is temporary. And it's here to show us something. And it's here to reflect to us greater levels of strength and power that we're cultivating through these challenges, challenging experiences. Because, hey, once we break those walls down, once we inevitably break those walls down and break through our own prison of fear and shame and guilt and whatever else it is, we can look back at that and go, whoa, I did that. I broke down those walls. I made the changes I need to make. I set myself free. And that is how we cultivate empowerment, confidence, trust in ourselves. The creator wouldn't just give us the perfect life. That's not why we're here. We're here to learn. We're here to grow. The creator's not going to break down those walls for you. He's not going to set you free because you have free will for a reason. Free will is a gift. And the creator is saying, you got to get yourself out of this so that you can see how powerful and capable you really are. With my help, of course, the creator says. So when you come to this place again, we want to feel different than how it felt the last time we were at this place, okay? So in previous levels of being stuck, what happened? You set yourself free and you gain new levels of confidence and new levels of strength. How can we imagine this to come? How can we already picture ourselves there and go, what is it though that I've cultivated now that's gonna help me to be even stronger this time around? How can we prepare ourselves for the situation knowing that, okay, when this comes up for me again, how am I gonna respond? How am I gonna act? How can I send that awareness and that power into the future, right? There's literally a symbol for this in Reiki. It's called the Honchaze Shonen symbol, and it's sending energy across timelines, sending energy into the future or the past. So how can we send this energy into the future like a battery, an extra reserve to be accessed once we're there? Okay, so you could picture it, meditate on it, but the best way you can prepare is by actively facing the current challenge head on, okay? Going through these first three cards that we spoke about is going to help us prepare best for the f that future moment. Staying in our hearts, staying heart-centered is going to bring us so much strength, so much perseverance to move ahead. And also doing this right now, knowing that we have to progress, creating this understanding that, yeah, we, we don't feel satisfied, so we need to do something new. We need to create a change. It's up to us to do that. Okay, realizing that right now and then taking those steps to make those changes is what's going to help us when we get to this point, say, no, I'm not keeping myself here. I'm setting myself free. I'm not going to go back. I'm not going to go backwards. I'm going to progress. So when you get to this point and you see, you start to notice how, oh, I could make those same old choices and I can very well keep myself stuck here. Instead, you're going to say, but I won't because I've done so much prep work. 
before getting to this point so that I could be prepared in this moment to say no to recreating an old cycle so that I could get to this moment and go, oh, I know it's only me in my own way. Whereas before I might've lied to myself and said it was so-and-so, it was this person, it was that person keeping me trapped. I no longer am going to victimize myself. And I see how, right, this is us at this point saying, I see how I could continue to choose those uh, behaviors that reflect victimization, self-victimization. Oh, but I can't lie to myself anymore. I know that it's up to me and there ain't no one else keeping me here trapped but myself. And I remember what it felt the last time to be disappointed with my choices. And so I'm going to make new ones. Two cups, two swords. We're going through challenges. It's all so that we can deepen our water wisdom, wisdom of the heart. We're on a path of emotional mastery. The road is never ending. However, we're at a new beginning right now. We're at a turning point. And we're ready to connect to our own hearts and to the heart of the one in a, in a much deeper way so that we can expand and progress on the path of emotional mastery. Thank you guys for opening up this portal with me this week. Enjoy the light of the full moon. Enjoy the beauty of it. And enjoy that light as it blossoms inside of you. Um, I signed into my Amazon account the other day for my book, my publishing account, and I was so surprised to see 30 reviews from you all. And I was just experiencing so much joy reading through these lengthy reviews, some of them, and just really feeling you, you all pouring your heart into these reviews. It was definitely a highlight of my week. So thank you so much for those of you who did that. And reviews are always welcome. I'd love to hear how your journey is going with my book, The Royal Path. I've been thoroughly enjoying writing part two for you all. The first book is on the major arcanum and this next book is on the minor arcanum. So all of the descriptions of all the other cards are gonna be in my new book. And you guys, it's my personal sh secrets I'm sharing with you. What I'm about to share is uh, stuff that you can't find in any other book. It's stuff that I've cultivated personally throughout my journey in life. Um, new ways, new perspectives of looking at the tarot, new ways of using it, um, so I'm really excited to share these secrets with you all. I love doing private readings. I love doing the one-on-ones. But there is something very special about teaching the tarot, revealing the wisdom of the tarot so that you can use it for yourself anytime, in any moment on your path, whatever you're going through. So I'm so excited to release that. If you know anyone, family, friends, or groups on Facebook even, who would benefit from receiving this message, please feel free to share it. I would so appreciate that. I love getting these messages around the world. The more people in the portal, the better. <laughs> if you know of someone who could really supercharge this week's portal, this message we just pulled in, then go ahead and send it with them. Get them in the portal. Uh, I am on YouTube, for those of you guys who are watching this on Facebook right now. My YouTube is youtube.com slash Rebecca Magic, just like my name on here. If you hit subscribe, you'll get notifications when these videos are loaded there. And also, you guys, I have two private groups on Facebook. One of them is called The Royal Path, and it's where we all kind of gather and talk about archetypal awareness and activation. I've got another group called Shabbat Crew, S-H-A-B-B-A-T Crew, C-R-E-W, and that one is all about Jewish mysticism, and every week I share my favorite sources and explanations of the current Torah story that we're at with Shabbat. So if you want to learn a little more about Jewish mysticism and how it really reveals secrets for everyone, go ahead and join my private group, Shabbat Crew. I will be posting there shortly today because Shabbat is tomorrow, and I like to share the story a little bit earlier so that everybody can kind of get on the same wavelength. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Remember to stay hydrated today and always. Remember to stay in your heart. Put this image on your altar. <laughs> or create an image within your mind's eye of that overflowing grail of the heart. And stay there. And that's where I'll meet you. Shalom, everybody.